let's just assume that your organization just made some sort of a change to your infrastructure where some of your ci cd pipeline tooling is now publicly accessible over the internet or even better let's just assume that a bug bounty hunter or an ethical hacker like myself has just gotten access to your gitlab and they're looking for vulnerabilities so with that said in this video i want to show you what i would do if i just found a gitlab instance in both of the examples that i'm going to walk you through are just based on real vulnerabilities that i have found in some bug bounty programs and bdp starting with the first one which was in nasa and nasa just sent me this cute letter right here and they just said that hey thank you for finding this and i'm not promoting doing any free work or looking for free bugs but it was a cool little vulnerability so i just thought why not make a lab out of it and the second example that i'm going to look at here is also based on a bounty that i got a max bounty of five thousand dollars on this bug bounty program a few years ago to do this what i'm actually going to use is the ci cd goat i just took their entire infrastructure and just used docker to just build the infrastructure but i've made some changes to the labs to make it work with the way that i want it to be presented but i think ci cd goat is an amazing resource if you haven't done it yet you should go check it out i'll put a link down below in the description or in the pinned comments you can just check it out and just go hack on these ci cd pipelines and kind of learn how it all works with different tools and if you expose different ones on the internet also keep in mind that gitlab isn't the only one that has this issue it, all these are different enterprise tools of maybe it's jenkins maybe it's gitlab github some of these atlassian products they all could be misconfigured at some point and depending on how it's misconfigured and you can find different endpoints that you can attack and maybe leverage them to find vulnerabilities or elevate your access before we continue i want to quickly give a shout out to our sponsor sneak who is throwing an awesome online conference called devsetcon on october 8th 2024 devsetcon will bring thousands from all over the globe together for lessons and hands-on experience on ai security open source security and security culture with awesome industry speakers and friends of mine like john hammond and Daniel Meeslers. You have two opportunities to tune in no matter where you are in the world. There is a friendly time zone option with the first broadcast starting at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern time on October 8th and then at 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Australian Eastern time on October 9th. So don't miss out on this amazing event. Go into the link pinned in the comments and sign up today. Let's take a look at this GitLab instance. The first thing that I usually try to do is your typical like admin admin passwords and see if those work but in this case i know it's not going to work i'm just going to show it just as a proof we do admin password none of it works but you also have the option to register a lot of times this actually could give you a foothold into this application and depending on what it is uh you can just get access and maybe elevate your access and see if it takes you anywhere so i'm just going to make this user account and i'm just going to give it a password one two three and see if it lets us and it looks like it comes back and says nope you are going to be awaiting approval again there has been times where i've gotten access to an instance but then it turned out that it was publicly accessible which we'll talk about in a little bit but i just want to point out that you have the option here to sign up and see where it takes you and sometimes who knows maybe you're lucky and somehow they approve your gitlab account depending on how you signed up for it but just in this case alone this one didn't work let's take a look at our first example and that is just by looking at uh, the explorer when you go to explore we're going to take a look at this deeply later but when you hit explore sometimes it gives you an overview of a lot of different uh, parts of gitlab including some of these projects keep in mind though that sometimes these projects are meant to be publicly accessible because maybe they open source it but they want to host it on their enterprise edition so you have to use theirs but just keep in mind that just because it is publicly accessible doesn't mean that it is vulnerability or you should be reporting it but that doesn't necessarily mean that some of these public repositories do not have any credentials or any juicy information that you can leverage in your day-to-day -day bug hunting or whatever it is that you are trying to achieve at the end of the day. So you can leverage this to find credentials. You can look for different routes, different information. But for the sake of uh, example, I'm going to skip that and come back to it at the end of the video because it is our longer example. But I just kind of want to highlight that that is a option to do because then now our second example makes more sense. So the next example is just to assume if you hit explore it doesn't work and i've had that happen plenty of times when you hit explore it's just going to put you back into where so let's just say there's an invalid path if you do explore it says you need to sign in or some sign up before you can continue that is what happens a lot of times but that doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot access uh these projects if you're not familiar with gitlab they actually have a huge rest api and the resources that you that comes with it all this information is publicly available you can just go to gitlab's 
uh, documentation and look for it and there are a lot of different paths that you can hit so starting with just the api v4 and just hitting projects and just seeing the different projects that are available remember we had access to explore we knew these existed but again there are times where you will not be able to see that and just having this alone can give you some information that is great because now we can actually go through these and start cloning some of these repositories and just keep going so in this example we can also just look at the projects themselves i'm just going to look at project 4 which is awesome app and within this we have some information we have the readme url that we can look at we have the uh, repository itself we have the avatar and all that stuff but we can also take a look at the commits so we can do a repository and then go to commit or commits and you can see the list of commits that have been done and also gives you the list of the authors so if you want to kind of take a look at these different authors and see who they are you also have that option here just to look and get the usernames and you can always go back and see if you can you can brute force or do some password stuffing here and see if you can guess the password for this next user for example so that's just one idea of things you can do you can see what they have committed uh there are a bunch of different users so let's look at, look at our first example this is kind of a very very basic example of it in my original approach with nasa what i did was unfortunately i can't disclose the whole thing but what i did was i just pretty much cloned the entire project so you can see right here we have the ability to clone this right here and we can go get clone http and that just gives us the app and we can go in here and now we have access to this application you can use some tools like your truffle hog or some of the other tools that you have to scan the source code for credentials for secrets and also see if there are any routes maybe match up with your targets web applications that where this awesome app has been used so sometimes the app names could actually just uh, match the subdomains or the application names so just kind of do a little bit of recon and look for it a lot of times i like to look at the docker file that usually does give you some good insight on the application you can see that uh, there are some different entry points. There's a requirements. We can actually look at what it requires. Uh, and you can see here, it is actually a token that we can use. So there's a token for GitLab that we can use. And uh, we can probably just poison this repository somehow. But I'm not going to cover that because that's just way too deep in the CICD pipeline work. But it is a great resource. So if you're watching this, you're interested, you should definitely check out CICD GOAT and just finish this off on your own. But in my case with NASA, after just clicking on a million different times and going through all these projects, I ended up coming across this specific folder that I think was custom to NASA and they just let me request it. And just when you request it, it would give you this entire internal panel that was meant for GitLab. And then when you clicked on any of those links, it authenticated you to a different application because it assumed just because you had access to GitLab, you also were supposed to have access to the different applications. So that was that. It's just I cloned a bunch of different projects, did some brute forcing around GitLab itself and just found this specific endpoint and it gave me access. Super easy-ish, complicated, just requires a little bit of code review, which again, I'm not the best at code review, but you can just do some grips and look for uh, different endpoints and things like that that could give you leads. Now, let's talk about our second approach, which is going to back to the slash explore. And luckily for us, there are only three projects here. What you can do here is you can actually just explore these projects and go through them one by one and Kind of look through the source and see what's inside of them. Maybe inside of some of these files, you can find some credentials or something that could point you to a vulnerability or maybe even better, an internal asset. The other option is to actually just search for things. So you can go into here and type in maybe secret or something like token, see if anything comes up. This one didn't have anything, but you have that option as well, which is kind of time consuming. And honestly, I had to do that with 30 to 40 projects because back then I wasn't really good at tooling and also it wasn't really i was just super young and i didn't know what i was doing so that was just my option at the time i had to do everything manually but now we know better so i want to show you how to do that without manually looking at it but also keep in mind that there are also other things that you can look at for example you can look at issues and see if anyone has maybe accidentally leaked something thinking this is internal looking at the boards maybe even going into the deployment and looking at what's inside of it so honestly a lot of these are interesting to look at but not always do they just turn into be vulnerabilities or leaking information. But now instead, we're going to go in here and do a quick curl and hit the API v4 projects and ask it to give us the HTTP URL to repo. So if you do that, it's going to give us the link of this. Again, if you're not sure how that works, I'm just show you what it looks like. If we just do a JQR, this is all it gives us. It is the same output as the API that we saw earlier, except we're just now asking it to give us the URL 
to each repo. So I'm gonna do this one more time. It gives us this. I've dumped this all into a file already. So if we do, let's go back to our folder. Uh, actually, I don't have it, it looks like. So I'm gonna do a nano projects, copy these in there, and then uh, we're gonna do a cat projects and we're gonna just replace GitLab with our localhost 4000 right here. And then we're going to pass it to Xargs and just clone every single one of them, which it's going to do it right here. Now that we have everything cloned in here, what I'm going to do is we have a couple of options. We can make a loop that says, hey, for every uh, file in LS, you can just pass this to Trufflehog or you can do some Xargs, whatever the choice may be. But you want to scan all of these different projects with Trufflehog. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually launch Trufflehog really quickly. If you're not familiar with Trufflehog, they actually scan your projects for secrets. It could be a Docker image, it could be GitLab, it could be GitHub. You can point a Jenkins instance to it. You name it, it does it. You can also just pretty much give it a folder. So I'm just going to say this folder, for example, and uh, it's just going to uh, scan it for us and see if it finds any credentials. So now we're going to do this really quickly. You can see that we have found a couple of things. One is this one. I think we talked about this a little bit maybe. If we haven't, this is just a token that we can use to probably uh, poison some of the uh, projects that are here, or repositories that are within this GitLab instance. This is a part of the CICD GOAT pipeline thing that I talked about earlier. If you want to check it out, make sure you do it. I'm going to skip that for now. But the second one that you can find, which is the second vulnerability that I found was finding a file that was actually not as easy as this, but I found a file that had leaked a user right here which instead of alice was just built and it had a token pointing to the gitlab instance so instead of saying localhost 4000 it was build token and then localhost 4000 which the localhost 4000 was the company's name and i was just able to authenticate to that and the way you can actually authenticate and see if that token is available or it's actually valid is by just going to api v4 users uh seeing that we're not authenticated let's that one more time and then we're gonna say Actually, it's user, not users. It says unauthorized. Now we can say uh, token, I believe. Maybe it's actually access underscore token. Looks like now we can access this. So it kind of shows us that now we're authenticated and we can do some stuff with this. So what we're going to do now here is we're going to go back into this project right here. And we're just going to do a git clone. But this time, we're just going to clone using these credentials. And once it is cloned, we're going to go into the folders. I'm just actually going to remove this one. So one more time. We're going to clone it. Just remove everything in here and do a git clone. We cloned it. Now that we go in here, the point that we're trying to make here is that we can validate the theory that we can change the source code of these projects and then eventually deploy them into the prod or internal assets that could give us some leverage maybe to get a shell back or whatever the case may be for the sake of example what i'm going to do here is i'm going to make a file called uh, nahamsec and we're just going to add this into our git so i'm going to do a git add and then i'm going to do a commit and see if it actually does work and i'm going to actually do a git remote and set our url for where we're going to push this and then do a git push and now as you can see it's uploading our file and if we go in here and we take a look we scroll down we can see that we were able to just add a file into it and obviously adding a file isn't the the goal here we could have probably modified something in the source and maybe change the python code here so when it gets redeployed into the application we get a shell back and we have access to this company's infrastructure this was similar to what i did it's just harder to recreate these vulnerabilities that are real in a actual organization and recreate them using someone else's ctf and infrastructure but i really wanted to make this video and kind of showcase some of the different things you can do when you come across some of these enterprise tools and looking at how they work and maybe you can leverage some of the apis and do something that could eventually give you uh, some sort of a lead to a vulnerability so remember the next time you come across an enterprise tooling that could be self-hosted always always look for misconfigurations hacker one reports are a great place to look at them i know there's a couple of really good talks on these things but also uh, there are some new client templates that you can use to identify these in mass all right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and become a homie. And I will see you all in the next week's video. Peace.